this is an interesting circuit, so I wanted to model it and uh, take a deeper look at it with you. Uh, so what you're looking at on the screen, this is a very basic circuit simulator I use all the time. It's at fallstad.com. It's absolutely free. I encourage you to play around with it, and I'll link the text file of this circuit that I built. Uh, here's the circuit on the right. We've got a, f oops, we've got a full wave rectifier right here. We've got a shunt filter capacitor. We've got a parallel DC resistive load. Here's our two, our two phases of that Y connected power supply. This asterisk right here represents the negative polarity of the voltage. So think of this as A to neutral, and then down here, B to neutral. I'm just using a voltage of two, about 277 RMS. We've got 60 Hertz, our zero degree reference angle. Down here, we've got the same RMS voltage, about 277 for a total line voltage of 480. And B phase, we're lagging by 120 degrees, typical balance and positive sequence, right? This right here, this is just a voltmeter. This is just a scope I've attached to the circuit. And look, line to line, we get what we'd expect, 480 volts RMS. This is also just a voltmeter. It's just letting me measure the voltage across the resistor. And then this circuit on the left, it's the same exact circuit. It's just without the capacitor and without the resistor. And what that's going to let us do, it's going to let us scope or chart the full wave rectified output. I can't really do that when I have the capacitor across the output as a filter because then that's when we get that charging and discharging ripple output. So I just duplicated the circuit here on the left without the capacitor, without the resistor, just so we can look at the rectified full wave voltage only without that filter. All right, so I'm gonna run the circuit over here on the right. First thing, let's scope the AC input. So right here, I'm just going to view in a new scope. And I'm just going to speed up the simulation so we can get some, we can get our scope here. And I'm going to adjust the scale. Let's see. Oh, I probably need that direction. Let's see how that looks. We'll run it. OK, great. I'm just gonna let it fill up on the screen there in the bottom. Let's pause it. So here, I probably have to get my face out of the way. Uh, so here is our line to line 480 volt RMS. Uh, same thing as line to line peak voltage of about 678.8 volts down here, right? That's just 480 volts RMS line to line. That's our AC input alternating it as we would expect to from positive to negative. All right, now let's compare that to uh, the rectified voltage, the full wave rectified voltage. So I'm gonna scope this output right here on the left. So let's go ahead and add that to our existing scope. What do we expect to get? We expect to get just those positive peaks, right? Let's run it and take a look. Here we go. I'm gonna pause it. In red is just our positive rectified peaks, just like what we would expect to see. All right, I'm going to now remove the AC input. It didn't like that very much. So let's get our rectified voltage back. Let's remove, hmm, doesn't like that. So right now I just want to chart, view in new scope. I just want to chart the, there we go. We're gonna look at just the rectified voltage and we're gonna compare that to our output and then we'll look at those positive and negative peaks of the charging current. So let's change our horizontal scale quite a bit. Man, that looks pretty good. And we will pause it. All right, we've got our rectified output. Let's compare this full wave rectified output to the true output when we have this filter capacitor and it's gonna create that charging and discharging cycle with the ripple voltage. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and add this voltage to our existing scope. I'm gonna slow down the speed and run the circuit. All right, what do we get down below? Notice the red line, that's the true voltage output, the true instantaneous DC output with that filter capacitor. I'm gonna speed it up here and then we're going to pause it so we can talk about it. All right, if I look at this red, right, that's the true output across our DC load. All right, let's trace it. We'll pick right here, look. Uh, the capacitor's charging right here. Now the capacitor is discharging. Charging, discharging, charging, discharging. All right, good so far. Now let's compare that to the current right here being supplied by the AC source. We'll get some interesting outputs when we do. So let's go ahead and add that to the existing scope right here. Now I'm gonna run it and I'm just going to fill all the data and we'll pause it. All right, so our current right here it says zero amps because that's just instantaneous. If I run it and I slow it down, you'll see that value changing in RMS. You can also see the path of current in those diodes as they forward bias and close and reverse bias and open. So these yellow peaks, this is the actual sum of both the charging current drawn by the capacitor right here and drawn by the load. So it's not a true sinusoidal kind of peaks and valleys like it shows in that solution to the problem. So now our next question is, why is it not a perfect sinusoid? Well, the capacitor, it's gonna charge really quickly. It's gonna draw a really high amount of current and then the current slowly decays, right? If we, if we pause this, let's look at this charging current peak right here. Look, notice that intersection right here. This is where the capacitor, here's my capacitor output voltage. The capacitor changes from discharging right here to charging, right? At this moment in time, that capacitor is charging. So it's gonna draw a sharp amount of current. And then as the capacitor, as it becomes closer to being fully charged right about here, you'll notice that the capacitor current is decaying rather rapidly. So high charging current right in the beginning, remember capacitors are nonlinear load. And then as the capacitor gets close to being fully charged, as the voltage across the capacitor equals the voltage being applied against it from the full wave rectifier. Look, that charging current is going to decrease right at zero, right? That point of the charging current equals zero, that represents the capacitor is fully charged. And again, what do you notice at this moment in time? Now our capacitor is discharging. Again, this red line represents the actual output applied to the DC load with that filter capacitor in parallel uh, along with the full wave rectifier. All right, so our next question is, why are the charging, the sum of the charging and the load current, why are they alternating positive and negative? Well, if you look at where this dot, or not diode, this is an amp meter symbol. If you look at where this amp meter is connected, it's connected f measuring the current being supplied by this AC voltage input. Now, I've got two AC voltage inputs, similar to the problem, and that problem one fuse blows so that three phase full wave rectifier turns into a single phase full wave rectifier. So really we've got uh, one phase 277 volts RMS A to neutral, and then one phase 277 volts RMS B to neutral. We can just think of this as a combined single phase line voltage of 480 volts at uh, 30 degrees, right? Compared to our zero degrees A phase of that Y connection. So just think of this current being supplied by, I know it sounds silly, single phase 480. Think of a two pole, two pole breaker and a three phase panel. This is the current being supplied by the AC input feeding that rectifier. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear this up a little bit. Um, now, all we wanna do is we just wanna compare the current being supplied by the AC voltage and the total AC voltage. Then we'll see why the peaks are alternating. Um, <clears throat> another thing we can talk about before we get there is why there are gaps in it. So first of all, let me just clear this uh, entire, I like to just clear this entire plot and let's look at just the current. Uh, first of all, the peaks are alternating. We'll talk about that in one second. I think you, you came to the realization why in your post, but 
Why are there gaps? Why is this zero current? Then I have a positive peak rapidly decaying, then zero current followed by the negative peak and then rapidly decaying. So what's happening in this circuit? When the capacitor right here is charging, it's going to draw current from this AC power supply and during the positive input peak of the voltage, it's gonna flow this way, right? This current, it's gonna be the same current flowing right here. And then at this node, it's going to feed the capacitor and it's going to feed our DC load, right? So this current, it's the sum of both. Sum of the capacitor charging current and the sum of the DC load current, right? They sum right here at this node according to Kirchhoff's current law. Uh, during the negative peak cycles, this current flows in the opposite direction. It's going to flow uh, through the other pair of diodes, right? It's going to flow this way. The reason why there's zero amps between these positive and negative peaks is that when this capacitor, when it switches from charging to discharging, now the voltage across the capacitor is greater than the voltage being supplied to it by our full wave rectifier. When that happens, all four of these diodes are going to reverse bias. They're all going to open. Unlike over here, our standard single phase full wave rectifier without a capacitor, you always have one pair of diodes closed at each, any given time, depending on if it's the positive peak or the rectified negative peak. However, when we add that capacitor, that's no longer the case. Anytime this capacitor transitions from charging to discharging, the voltage across it, the voltage that it's supplying, it's now acting as a voltage source, it's gonna be greater. It's gonna be greater than the voltage being supplied to it, which reverse biases all these diodes. They turn into an open circuit. It effectively disconnects everything to the left of the capacitor temporarily while it's discharging. When the capacitor is discharging, it's supplying 100% of the load current to this load. It's The load current is just flowing in a circle right here until the voltage from the capacitor decreases to a point where it's now equal to the voltage across it. And then the second it falls below that point, then the capacitor is going to charge again and we no longer have zero amps. Now we have amps being supplied by our AC uh, our AC voltage, the input power supply. So these zero amps right here, it's not that there's no current flowing in the circuit, there is, right? It's flowing in just this series loop when this entire full wave bridge is, is reverse biased. Uh, however, when we, when we stick an amp meter right here, right on the left side of our rectifier, leaving our AC source, well then technically there's zero amps just here when the capacitor is discharging. There's still current flowing in this loop, but we're not measuring the current right there. We're measuring the current either leaving the AC uh, voltage power supply, or we could even stick it down here from right to left. It'd be the same thing, right, in that loop. So even like if I run the circuit, if I slow down the animation, if I slow down the speed, we got zero amps right here. So right now you can see these dots going up. They're discharging. Oh, now it's charging again. Capacitor is discharging. See the lines going up. Oh, now it's charging again. We got amps. Now it's discharging. We got zero amps. And now, oh, it's charging again. We got amps again. All right, last thing. Let's just compare these, um, these peaks. So it's not really accurate to call this the charging current. It's the sum of the charging current and the load current, again, only because of where we have this amp meter connected in the circuit. Or we could just say it's the current being supplied by the AC power supply. Let's compare this current to just the AC voltage, right? I'm um, going to scope this voltmeter right here from A all the way to B, right? Because that's essentially the voltage right here that we're applying to the rectifier. That's the voltage that's delivering or supplying this current right here that we're measuring. All right, let's scope it, let's see what we get. Uh, let's add it to the existing scope down below and uh, let's run it. I'll speed it up for a second so we can get a lot of good data and then let's pause it. All right, look, the red sine wave, that's our A to B line voltage supplying the rectifier and these yellow peaks 
and negative peaks, that's the current being measured leaving the AC power supply. What do we notice? During the positive peak right here of our AC line voltage from A to B, we have a positive current peak leaving that voltage right here. Now we're in the negative AC line voltage peak. Look at that. Now our AC current is also negative. It's just Ohm's law, right? I equals V over Z. If the voltage is negative on top of the fraction, the current's going to be negative. That's all. Um, just as our AC, as it oscillates from positive to zero to negative, back to positive, the current's going to do the same thing. The current's flowing in one direction during the positive peak, and then it reverses direction during the negative peak. So that's why those peaks are positive and negative. It's just due to where we're measuring it. Oh, I lost my mouse. Um, and that's why there's the zero amp gap between the peaks and the valleys. 